Thank you for joining me today. My name is Christoph from CBR Technology. We are Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central Partner and have our headquarters in Huntington Beach with a satellite office in San Francisco. Today I would like to go over the job cost module capabilities of the Business Central system. CBR Technology not only offers support for the Business Central solution, but we also provide form customizations, data migrations, training, as well as customization and programming services for the Business Central environment. I will give additional information about these services at the end of the video. Business Central comes in two flavors. One is Essentials and the other is Premium. The only difference between those two products, as they are offered by Microsoft, are the availability of the manufacturing module, service management module, and warehouse management module. If those three modules are of no interest to your organization, the essential product will suffice. Job costing is part of either one of these editions. Job costing overview starts with a basic look at job master information. So a job master would be typically a construction project or a large scope job project that you're dealing with and you like to keep track both from a financial perspective as well as a project management perspective information that as it relates to each one of these jobs or projects. Once you have a job or a project set up, in the master setup, you then can define tasks. These tasks could be as detailed or as summarized as you please, but they essentially allow you a division of job into smaller steps and sections. Once you have job tasks configured, you can also add the ability to do job planning entries. These job planning entries can be budgetary or they could be billable with regards to the actual lines. Important about job planning process is that job costing includes typically the management of resources and time of human resources typically. Of course, that could also include equipment and machinery. But you could also configure budgetary lines on an inventory basis and on a GL basis. So inventory basis means you can allocate specific inventory items to a job or project and make them part of particular tasks as well. And I'll go through an example of that detail as part of the actual product walkthrough. The job planning line is also for budget purposes. However, if you're not planning on using budget versus actual analysis as part of your job costing system configuration, the job planning may be limited to other parts that don't include budgeting. Resource activity tracking is, of course, a primary function of any job costing module. And in the Microsoft world, these resources can be human beings as well as special equipment that may be needed to perform or work on a job. These resources can then in turn also be grouped together and on the planning or scheduling perspective can be treated as a group instead of an individual resource. Once you get past a resource configuration and group setup, if applicable, you then can record timesheets and you can define approvers for timesheets. So people working on a job can be assigned to a timesheet approver. That approver would get notified when the timesheet has been completed and the approval would then release it for billing purposes to the rest of the team and the rest of the module. In the resource configuration, it's also important to note that the software has the ability to track specialized skilled and labor capabilities that might be needed to perform certain tasks on a certain job. Before we dive into the actual product, I'd like to go over purchasing and sales activities as well. Specifically purchase orders and purchase invoices that may be related to a job. So when you issue purchase orders, you have the ability to track a particular line on a purchase order to a job and a job task line, which is a step within the job. You can do the same for regular purchase invoices as well. Of course, the software has full work in progress or WIP capability or WIP capability as it's commonly referred to. These WIP capabilities are referring both to the cost part of a job as well as the revenue part of a job. And I'll go through that in the actual product demo here shortly. Finally, all of that can roll into the sales invoice section of the job and update accounts receivable and general ledger as part of that update routine as well. 
So having said all of this, I'd like to dive into the product and show you what job costing looks like in Business Central. So here is Kronos USA, the job costing page. I'd like to point out that from a navigational point of view, I've already made myself a job manager or a project manager. And you can do that vis-a-vis -vis changing your settings on your profiles under the gearbox icon. You can click on my settings. And Microsoft has created or predefined a number of roles that you see here. Depending on your function in the organization, you can assign yourself to a different role. Uh, it's important to note that this has nothing to do with security. Uh, it's simply configuring menus and options you see on the screen, but they don't necessarily mean that your security is of such nature that you have access to all those parts of the system. In my case, I make myself a project manager, and as a project manager, you will see the functions you see here on the home dashboard that have some artificial intelligence charts and tiles that are available to you. In addition to that, you might see some action pull-down menus where you can quickly create new records in a number of areas of the system and run reports and manage and do a number of other things right here from the home page. In addition to doing things through the menu, you can always search for them as well with the search function on the top right hand side of the system. I've now opened up the job master listing page, which lists the summary of all the outstanding jobs we currently have. If I go to my first job here, you'll see the master information about this job. In this particular case, a reception area remodel that we're working on. And of course, we have project management, tracking capabilities, and assign responsible people. In addition to that, on the right-hand side, you see a fact box that shows you information relevant to the job as a whole, separating budgeted costs versus actual with billable versus invoiced, and all of this information being categorized into three primary categories. One is resources, which is, of course, human beings as well as machinery, and then inventory items from your inventory control module, as well as GL level details as well. Furthermore, you can attach documents to a job and these would be technical drawings, construction plans, things, permits, things of any significant significance relating to the job that you like to track in a single corporate database with anybody that has access to the job having access to these attachments as well. You can toggle the fact boxes off and on by simply hitting this I button here and that will collapse the view off the fact box and makes it disappear. Now, in addition to the header, of course, there's the lines of the job, which I'll get to in just a moment. And then below the lines, you'll see posting, duration, foreign trade, and whip recognition information as well. And these are pretty self-explanatory, but you obviously have a fair amount of functionality surrounding multi-currencies and planning and status updates with regards to WIP method and recognition methodologies that you'd like to use for this particular job. Certainly every job can fall into a different WIP recognition method, and this is where you set it on a job-by-job -job basis. Now after the header, job header information, you can also deal with individual lines or tasks. So the job task number and job task line is referring to the individual items that are on the job itself. These jobs can be headers and footers just to logically organize things as well as actual action items that you can then record against using a posting type. There's obviously some timeline information here as well, and then you can both budget costs as well as revenue in this configuration as well. To maximize the view of the lines, you can hit this little uh, box on the right-hand side and it shows you nothing but line task, job task line information as well. You can toggle in and out of that view quite nicely. So after you configure the job header and the line or task lines, you can also configure the job planning lines. The job planning lines are specific resources, inventory items, or GL level accounts that are being selected to be part of individual task numbers. So as you can see here in the sample data, I have specific people and resources assigned to specific task steps on the left hand side here. And then you can put down your budgetary quantities and or 
um, see the invoice quantities as well. So in here you can have not just human beings as resources, but as I mentioned before, you can have machinery, equipment, you can have inventory items from the physical inventory, as well as GL level information. So this is called the job planning lines that can be part of your job costing configuration. So in addition to the job definition, you have to also configure resources. So resources can be grouped into resource groups. They typically represent human beings, but they could also be pieces of equipment or uh, fixed assets that are being used by the company. In our case here, we have some sample data of some folks that are in the database. In addition to setting up the actual resource itself, uh, you can trigger the ability of the timesheet functionality in the job costing module here as well on a user by user basis or resource by resource basis and who the approver of these timesheet records would be. So this activates workflow management capabilities in the software and they're turned on right in here. In addition to the basic financial information for this particular resource, you also have personal and data such as addresses and social security numbers and things of that nature. Finally, when it comes to resources, you also have the ability to track skills. And skills are referring to certifications typically of certain equipment or have the ability to do certain things and you can keep track of that in this database. This can be then used for resource selection in the future. In addition to that, you can also set up costs and prices for each resource. So uh, different resources might cost you different rates in different markets. So if you're dealing with any sort of prevailing wage situation, you can adjust the rates that the resources cost you depending on what area they're working in, etc. Same holds true for prices. So that's all done in here. From a planning perspective, you can also do resource capacity planning and set up a resource availability schedule and set up vacation weeks and things of that nature when the resource may not be available. So that's all part of the resource setup. Once you have set up resources, you can then proceed to record timesheets for resources as well as I've mentioned. Uh, so as a job or a project manager here, I have the ability to go into timesheets quite quickly and easily from the self-service timesheet function of the dashboard. When I click on that, I see my open timesheets in my case here. I'm recording a number of events I'm part of. The timesheet is pretty straightforward. It has the ability to track a number of different types of activities, resources, jobs, service, absence, and assembly orders. So as you can see here, the timesheet functionality in Business Central is not limited to the job costing module, but can be deployed throughout a number of different modules of the Business Central solution. In my case, I'm focused on job costing. So you can see that the first two entries are specifically referring to the main job and a task number that's related to that job. Within the task number, you can actually create multiple work types. In my example here, I have a consulting phase that I'm going through or a step I'm going through, and that consulting phase is actually divided into a meeting and a planning type. So as a result of that on my timesheet, I can actually separate these two types of work types from each other. If I was using the assembly order module to do some light assembly on the inventory control side, I can actually track hours against that. Also, if you're using the service management module, the service order number would be able to be referred back to in here uh, as well. So I just wanted to show you how, what that looks like and how powerful it is here to track time card entries for all employees. You can also record absences in here, you record PTO, for example, or just resource specific work that's not related to a job. And then finally, here on the right hand side, you have a number of totals that, that accumulate as you work your way through it. You can again hide these to, to see the entire week at the time. Once you're done with your entry, you can go through a submission process here that will submit the timesheet to your supervisor. And your supervisor that's set up in the resource card that we talked about a bit ago would be notified and the workflow would be triggered for that. Of course, that person can decline the worksheet and timesheet and you have to go back in and make adjustments uh, as requested by your supervisor. So that's in the timesheet functionality that you see here. It's quite powerful. Once you are submitting the timesheets to your supervisor, they'll show up in these pending timesheets here and it could be either rejected or approved and you can see them quite quickly here as a manager from your dashboard. Now with regards to the sales and purchase subledger related activity, 
you can do most things as a job manager from the sales and purchases pull down menu here. Uh, in my case, I can either issue a purchase order or just record a purchase invoice for job related expenses. And as you do them, they would be quite clearly marked and related to specific job lines and job tasks. So obviously I'm not gonna go through all the details here, but if you look on the individual line, you'll see that I have the ability to recognize a job and a job task number and whether or not it's billable or non-billable and a selling unit price for billing purposes of this particular part. So I'm purchasing something for a job, either on an invoice that you see here on a purchase order that then gives through a three-way matching process. In the end though, it will get billed out to the job or recorded as a cost for a job, depending on what type of revenue recognition methodology you have deployed on the job side of the system. So this is quite powerful from both the purchase order as well as a purchase invoice perspective. Coming back to the sales invoices, the sales invoices will also be generated by the system and they are auto-generated based on the setting in the posting configuration of the job module. I don't want to go into great detail here, but essentially once you do a posted invoice or an unposted invoice, you'll see the same type of configuration where you have job number and job task number and work type codes that are referring to the individual lines that can be completed as part of this process. So it's quite powerful when you post this all the way through, you of course uh, have the ability to then run a number of statistics and job reporting uh, functions that allow you to review this information quite quickly and easily. So under the posted document section, you can look at shipments and sales invoices and the number of registers that are either GL specific, item specific, resource specific, or job specific, as you can see here. Quite powerful, and really all the reporting in the world can be triggered off that. Of course, the Business Central works with Power BI. If you're not aware of it, Power BI is another Microsoft product which allows you to take the data straight out of Business Central and present it in an online reporting format for KPIs or just uh, business intelligence reporting out of the system. So instead of pushing data into a system like Microsoft Excel or something like that, which of course is built into Business Central through these functionalities that you see here, you also have the ability to access the database directly through Power BI. Hopefully you enjoyed this brief overview of the job costing module for Business Central. Again, it is part of both the Business Essential as well as the Business Premium account. CBI Technology provides customization, data migration, and training services, as well as, of course, system maintenance uh, updates, as well as they are part of the Microsoft subscription model at this point. Please feel free to reach out to us at 855-227-0700 or visit us at cbrtechnology.com. We'll be happy to work with you and your team in deploying Business Central into the job costing environment. Take care.